Tanya tyle suka, tyle stu limony. Okay, um, at this point we are going to go over some of the th types of things that can be measured um, that you are probably going to have to uh, be involved in measuring in this class and we're going to talk about um, the units that are used to measure them in the metric system. So the first one that we're going to talk about is length. Um, length, as I mentioned earlier, is the distance between two points. So let's say the distance from here to here, or if you want to measure how tall a person is, maybe the distance from here to the top of their head. But basically, anytime you're measuring the distance between two points, you're measuring the length of something. And as I mentioned earlier, the metric system has a special unit for measuring length called the meter. Again, the abbreviation is a lowercase m. And there are uh, metric variations on the meter that we will talk about in a little bit. But right now, I just want to talk about what a meter is. A meter is uh, about one single meter. The distance is about uh, a little bit more than one yard long. So you may know what a yard is. Uh, another way of thinking about how long a one meter is, is it's about the length, um, let's say, from your shoulder to the tips of your fingers, if you stretched out your arm as far as it could go, roughly speaking. Obviously, everybody's a little bit different in size, but um, that's, that's roughly what the length of one yard is. So we're going to talk about uh, the variations on the meter in a little bit, but let's go on to the next slide. Okay, volume, as I mentioned earlier again, my informal definition of volume is how much space something takes up in three dimensions, or 3D. So um, the metric system for measuring volume is called the leader, and again I mentioned the abbreviations are uh, lowercase or uppercase letter L. There are variations on that unit, there are variations on what uh, a unit is that, that are related to the leader. We will talk about that again in a little bit. Uh, I figure most people are familiar with a two liter soda bottle. So what that means is this soda bottle contains soda, there's the soda, um, that takes up two liters worth of space in three dimensions. So maybe if you had half of the soda right there, that's about one liters worth of three dimensional space. But the two liter bottles, they contain uh, twice as much, so two liters. Um, this uh, device over here, uh, it's called a graduated cylinder. Uh, hopefully it makes sense why it's called a cylinder because basically it's a tube. Uh, graduated just means that it has little markings where you can make uh, readings on. And graduated cylinder is kind of a standard device that's used in labs to measure how much space uh, liquids take up in three dimensions. So over here we've got some liquid and this uh, the, the line that says 1000 here is actually equal to one liter and whatever this purple liquid is, it's taking up a certain amount of space, and it's almost one liter's worth of space, or one liter's worth of volume, but it's not quite making it there. It's uh, 950, um, what's called a milliliter, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. All I want you to realize is that volume, uh, the metric system uses liters for measuring that unit. There will be variations on, uh, on the liter unit that we'll talk about in a minute, um, but there you have it. And I guess graduated cylinders are sometimes used to measure the volume of things, especially liquids. Okay, uh, Mass is something else that can be measured. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're cutting a corner, and as far as we are concerned, mass is roughly the same thing as weight, and I'm going to use that interchangeably. Uh, again, the metric system uses something called a gram uh, as its unit for measuring mass. Um, the stand, uh, one of the informal definitions that gets used a lot for how much a gram is, uh, one gram's worth of weight is about equal to uh, the standard metallic paper clip. Uh, uh, if you have a standard metallic paper clip, that usually weighs about one gram or has a mass of about one gram. Uh, the, the typical thing that you use to measure mass um, is an electronic balance or an electronic scale. Uh, here, they are trying to measure the mass of this nickel, um, and you can see that the nickel has a mass of approximately 5.01, and if you focus in right where I'm circling, there's a little g there. 
which means that nickel weighs 5.01 grams. Or if you want to think about it this way, this nickel has the weight of about five paper clips. So keep that in mind. And then you can measure other things that weigh much less than a gram, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and so ignore this. Ignore this for the moment. I'll pretend it's not there. Let's see, temperature, we also talked about uh, informal definition of temperature is how hot or cold certain things are. Again, the metric system uses a unit called degree Celsius for measuring temperature. The SI system uses something called a Kelvin, and that's abbreviated with a K, um, and no degree symbol. These are some uh, temperatures that are, well, they, I, I hesitate to use, I hesitate to say they are important temperatures to remember, but they're important for this course. So um, I, I'd like you to know these. I'd like you to know the fact that water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Another way of saying 32 degrees Fahrenheit is to use the Celsius unit and water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. So these two numbers are just two different ways of saying the same thing. The only reason the numbers are different is because we're using different units. And again, uh, the same temperature in Kelvin is 273 Kelvin. That's, uh, again, I'm cutting a tiny bit of a corner. I believe it's 273.15 Kelvin, but uh, you don't need to know the 0.15. So you should know what temperature water freezes at in all three units. The easiest one to remember, or at least this is uh, the propaganda that they sold me when I was in elementary school, is the, is the metric system measurement for temperature because it's easy to remember the number zero. Not so easy to remember the number 32, not so easy to remember the number 273, but eventually you will get to know them all. Uh, water freezes, water also melts at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. Those are all three different ways of saying the same thing. Um, converting between Celsius and Fahrenheit, so going from Celsius to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit back to Celsius is a little bit complicated. Uh, I think we're going to talk about it in a little bit, but um, right now just ignore it. Converting from, let me erase some of this noise, converting from Celsius to Kelvin is really easy. You just take whatever the number is in Celsius and you add 273. So if the temperature is zero degrees Celsius and you want to know what the same temperature would be written in Kelvin units, you would just take zero and add 273. So zero degrees Celsius is the same as 273 Kelvin. The other three temperatures that I want you to memorize are the temperatures that water boils or water condenses at. So if you have steam and you want to turn it back into water, that means you're condensing the water. If you have water and you want to turn it into steam, that means you're boiling it away. The, temp the, the standard temperature that water boils at in f degrees Fahrenheit is 212. The standard, the same temperature in the different unit of Celsius is 100 degrees Celsius. And again, um, you know, when I was a kid, uh, the nuns basically tried to tell me that Celsius and the metric system were the way to go because it's way easier to remember the number 100 than it is to remember the number 212. So if that helps you, um, 100 degrees Celsius is the standard temperature that water boils at or that water condenses at. And then finally, if you want to know what 100 degrees Celsius is in Kelvin, what did I say a minute ago? You add 273. So what's 100 plus 273? It's 373. So water boils, boils at 373 Kelvin. And doesn't this guy look fun? All right, as far as uh, summing up what you should know on the previous slides, you should know what the standard metric units and their abbreviations are for length, volume, mass, temperature, and time. And that you should also know that the SI system uses a different unit called Kelvin um, as its uh, unit for describing temperature or measuring temperature. So I'm coming back to the slide for a moment. Um, w one of the things that I want you to realize uh, is that these are not the only units, meter, liter, gram, Celsius, seconds. Those are not the only units that are part of the metric system. I said the metric system was a collection of units. It's just that these are the most common ones that are used a lot out there in the real world. So those are the ones that I want you to know. There are plenty of other features of material objects that you can measure that are not these. Um, 
but we're really not going to cover them um, in in this course. We might cover one or two as we go along, but uh, I just want you to realize that there's more than what what you're seeing at the moment. Mm -hmm.